If you have your Bibles, would you turn to me, with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 41 and verses 10. And it reads like this. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be thou not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. How many of you remember that during your childhood days, you were afraid of the dark? But it was comforting just to know that your mom or your dad or even your grandparents or some adult was with you in the room, holding their hands and leading you to your bedroom and even singing a lullaby and putting you to sleep. It is the same way our God comforts our heart when we walk with him through the dark. My topic today would be, why fear when your God is near? I have a little backdrop of this uh, text that I will share with you so that it will give you a clearer understanding of what I am talking about. This chapter was intended for the conviction of idolaters and the consolation for the faithful saints of God, both to convict them and to convince them and to comfort them and to encourage them so they might keep their integrity and walk with the living God. He assures the faithful that if they trust him with a promise that he will take their part against their enemies. So this chapter might be summed up in the words like Elijah. If God be God, follow him. But if Baal be God, follow Baal. So God raised up a man by the name of Cyrus. And don't you know how God can do his stuff? He doesn't wait for you and I. He can raise anybody who is available to do his work. It was a general challenge to the worshipers and to the admirers. And God caused him to become victor victorious among the nations. God always has proven himself to be victorious and strong on our behalf. So Isaiah 41 brings me to my text. It provides reassurance, hope, strength, and peace. There are at least six phrases in this text, but I'll be sharing some of them with you. Fear, the natural fear, the spiritual fear. And the second thing is, do not be dismayed. Don't lose heart. Don't lose hope. Be encouraged. For I am your God, personal reassurance. I will strengthen you. When all strength is gone, when you feel your strength has failed, God said he will strengthen you. You can depend on him. He said, I will uphold you. What consolation from the word of God that he is going to withhold you. Okay, the first thing I'll talk about is the natural fear. As human beings, we are all faced with some kind of fear. Fear I am not saying that we should run in front of a lion and throw ourselves, or in front of a bear, or a snake, or something like that. But there should be boundaries when we fear. People fear different things. Some people, like myself, I am terrified about snakes. Some about spiders. Some about frogs. Some about heights. <laughs> Some people fear what will happen even as 2024 begins. They were looking forward for something great and with expectation that they would have a good year. Amen? Some people fear their jobs. Some fear debts. Loss of material possession. 
as long as you have fear, you will be in bondage. For fear has many terrors. It has torment. Fear can torment your mind. It could cause you to think things that you never thought about because you are fearful and you are in a lock. But fear will bring very stress, make you very stressful. It can bring doubt and sadness in our heart. But as long as we keep our focus and our faith in God, he will help us through all of these. Fear will cripple our faith and cause us to doubt God. Many times we are fearful and instead of calling upon God, we doubt God's word and we doubt God's life for us. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.7 says that Satan is the original, originator of our fear. The enemy loves when we fear him. The enemy likes when we walk in darkness. The enemy loves when we become fearful and we can't do anything and we are timid. But look at our example, Peter walking on the water. The first thing he did, he took his focus out of the circumstances and he looked at the problem. And when we take our focus out of the circumstances and we look at the problem, we see that we will begin to fail and fall because we are looking at the surrounding. But God wants to take us through as long as we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, he will take us through our walk with him. We see that Gideon overcome fear through his assurance in God. Gideon had to fight many battles, but he trusted God through all of this. Let's talk a little bit about the godly fear. It is said that the comforting word, fear not, appears 366 times in the Bible. One for each day and an extra for a leap year. <laughs> Let us remember the words spoken by the creator of the universe. He is the one who told us not to fear because he is our God. He is sufficient. He is not limited. John 1, 4 and 6, 1 John 4, 18 says, God, perfect fear casted out all fear. Yeah. Godly fear means, I'll tell you what godly fear means. It means to give complete reverence and honor to him as the great God of glory, majesty, purity, and power, the one that has dominion over all. When we fear God, we are loving him. When we fear God, we love him. We want to please him in all that we do. In all that we say, if we fear him, we must fear him because he is holy. He wants us to walk in holiness with him. We fear God because we believe that he is our savior and our soon coming king. Things will cause us to, to, to interrupt our faith in God. Fear will cause us to lose out on the blessings. It will cause sleepless night. But when we remember the goodness of God in our lives, the goodness of God and where God has brought us from, we will call upon the name of the Lord, our God and our Savior, with great understanding and knowledge. We fear him because he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the last. And there is no one else like him. Spurgeon says, he who fears God has nothing to fear. We fear men so much, church, that we fear God so little. We fear what people say. We, fear, we are concerned what people think about us or how they see us. We have not uh, asked God to help us to overcome. We have to ask God today to help us to overcome our fear 
He's concerned about how we feel rather than how we look today. Satan will cause anxiety and fear and panic. He said, I will shut down schools. I will shut down businesses. I will take out prayer from the school. I will cause havoc. I will cause economic turmoil. But God says, I will restore. I will restore all that the enemy has taken from you. He said, I will bring back brothers to brothers, sisters to sisters. I will open up the church doors. I will cause people to come in again. I will bring dinner back on your table. I will teach you how to trust me and not to fear in the, in the, the, the hard time. He told his disciples not to fear, for I am with you. I am telling you today not to fear, because God is with you. Sometimes we forget when we're in a hard spot and things are rough. You thought that God has left you, but he didn't give you up. Acts 10 to say Cornelius, he had problems, but he loved God and he feared God with his household. And God assured him and answered his prayers. The church in Acts 2, 31 says, the churches feared God in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. And their griefs and their fears were swallowed up because they believed God and they serve the living God. Job feared God. When we fear God, we are secure and confident in him. Hebrews 11 says, by faith, Moses forsook Egypt. When we fear God, we will forsake our old ways and we will conform to the new ways. Let me share an illustration of how we can conquer our fears. The, o the old farmer, when asked by his neighbor, well, how is the cotton field coming along? Oh, I didn't plant any this year because I was afraid of the ball weavers. You know, the ball weavers, they feed on the flowers. Well, how about the corn? Well, I didn't plant any this year because of the drought. I was afraid that they wouldn't come right. Well, how about the potatoes? I didn't plant any because I was afraid of the bugs. Finally, the neighbor asked the farmer, oh, well, what did you plant? Oh, I didn't plant anything because I was so scared I wanted to play it safe. We are afraid of doing things the way we think will be safe when we play it safe, but God has a way of doing things. This irrational faith will cause us to miss out on the harvest and the blessing. Sometimes we try to play things safe on our own knowledge. But what about God? You decided not to sow your seed and, and plant on good grounds. And finally, we miss out on the blessing. We miss out on the harvest. We miss out on all that God has for us. What we have to do is speak to our fears. We have to condition our minds. We have to ask God to help us, or else fear will hold us as prisoners. You will become a person of fear. He will hold you in bondage. For it's easier for some of us to tell a lie. But we, who are children of God, must become fearless in standing up for what we believe. Fearlessness is not compromise. Now, there was a story about a gentleman who couldn't decide on which side he wanted to be. So he was going to the Civil War to fight against the North and the South. And so the first thing he did, he put on a trousers for the North, and for the South, he put on the top. 
But what do you think happened? He got shot for both sides. <laughs> you see, there is a danger when we compromise. We should not compromise because we will be get killed in the end. The enemy will take us out. You cannot be a half and half Christian. Today you are Christian. Next week you are in the world. We must be committed. Committed to the task. Committed to the Lord. Fearlessness does not mean that we are scared. It is how we function on the scary situation. The second point is, be not dismayed. The word dismayed here is a strong feeling of fear, worry, or sadness. This is caused by something in, on, unpleasant and unexpected. So someone hurt you and offend you, and it changed your mood of thinking. As Christians, our courage is targeted, so there is great discouragement among us. Sometimes people get discouraged because of their own personal failures. Our text here in verses 6 and 7 says, And they that were good encouragers, and they became good encouragers when they were going through the rough. You don't need people to put you down. So we need to be lifted up, church. You need to lift your brothers and your sisters up. In this case, everyone, 6 and 7 says, everyone have their neighbors. Everyone have their brothers. So the carpenter said, and the goldsmith got together, and they encouraged each other. This they were ready for the soldering, to, and they fastened it together. You know, sinners encourage sinner, Christians and sinners in the way that they should go. Why not we as Christians encourage each other in the way of the Lord? We should. Now, suppose the carpenter had said, Mr. Goldsmith, I think you are better off doing uh, goldsmithing work. What do you know about carpentering? And the carpenter said, well, Mr. Goldsmith, I think you better mind your own business. Well, if they had done that, they would not get the job done. You see, all together they were separate traders. But they were willing to work together to bring a happy change. You see, you and I might not have the same talent, the same gifting, but there is a call for action. But something will stir that call for action. It is real love put into words and in strength. Unity in the spirit. We have to get up in order to get the job done. We need to be good encouragers, good workers, Pulling together to bring this happy change. People who will help you lift your spirit with a good word of blessings. United it together with brothers and sisters, neighbors to neighbors, in order for this change. So I say to you today, do not be discouraged. For casting all your cares upon him, because he careth for me. All my anxieties, all my concerns, all my frustrations, all my ups and downs, all that bothers me because we have an enemy who likes to magnify the problems by making it look bigger when we, what it really is. In times of personal uh, crisis and national crisis, our faith falters, but God promised that the believer that he will be with you always. Always. Always, I say, he promised to be with us. God said, I will be with you in the fire. Like the three Hebrew boys, they would not bend. They would not bow. They would not lose their testimony. 
Instead of coming bitter, they came better. Instead of getting weaker, they became stronger because they were determined that come what me, I will make a stand for God. When you're going through the fire, you need to make your stand for God or else he will not stand with you. He said, I will take you through the waters and they will not overtake you. Oh my God, sometimes the problem is to the ankle, it is to the knee, it is to the waist. But I say, God said, it will not overtake you. He's about to open the floodgates of heaven and he's sweeping up your feet. God is getting ready to do something supernatural. God will sweep you up your feet and put you on dry grounds. The waters will not overtake you. No, the fires will not overtake you. They will just burn you on for Christ because God is looking out for you. God said, I will be with you. What comfort this morning? I will strengthen you, God within you. God beneath you and God all around you. He's the great I am. So why fear? when my God is near. Thirdly, he said, I will strengthen you. Oh, to be strengthened is to be courageous. It's to be steadfast. Our strength will fail from time to time. But I say to you, don't be afraid. Just wait. For those, the Bible says, for those that wait upon the Lord, he is going to renew their strength. Oh, you will mount up with wings like eagles. You shall run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. Oh, my dear, foolish fears and fret will vanish as he strengthened you this morning. Strength, will we, as we wait on him, strength will come to us. Psalms 27, 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Some of us are afraid of people. But the Lord said, he is my rock. He is my shield. He is my protector. He is my very present help in the time of needs. To be unloved, unappreciated. This weakens our spirit. But the power of the unfailing love of God will strengthen you this morning. I say strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. I will strengthen you like a deer and make you walk on high places. When God is getting ready to elevate you, the enemy will come in like a flood. But God say, I will strengthen you and cause you to rise. He wants to, you to rise up this morning. He, the dares are able to scale territories and elude pred predators. The enemy thought that he had you cornered, but God has you covered this morning. The enemy cannot hold you in a box, but God's grace and goodness will carry you through. The Lord will strengthen you when you flee from demonic problems. Sicknesses, loneliness, strife, envy, mockery, betrayals, criticism, and you get up in a high place with him. God will give you grace and strength to stand day by day. That's the God I serve today. That's the God you serve today. Oh, strength will come. Psalms 34, 6 says, this poor man cried unto the Lord. God wants to hear our cry today. And he delivered him from all, from all, not some, from all his troubles. What is troubling you today? When something bad happens to you, we have at least three choices. You can Either let it define you, you can let it destroy you, or 
you can choose to let it strengthen you this morning. Which would you choose? We gain strength and courage and confidence by each experience we have when we fear him. When a man and a woman fear the living God, we give ourselves to God. When we don't fear him, we give ourselves to evil. God said, partly, I will uphold you. Isn't it a wonderful thing to know that when you are going through the rock, when things are tight and you have a hand that is stretching out to you, reaching out to you and say, here, yeah, my child, I am here standing with you. Take my hands and I will lift you up this morning. God is stretching out his hands to you today. Oh, the problem might seem so much. It might seem so big. But I want you to know that there is someone holding our hands. Someone that is walking with us today. Telling us it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. But God is above. He's capable of holding our hands and helping us through. Isaiah 49, 16 says, Behold, I have inscribed you in the palm of my hands. Now, nobody wants to put a tattoo in their hands just for the sake of having a tattoo. No friend wants to put your name there. No, no neighbor wants to put their hands there. No family wants to put their hands, your, your names here. But look what God do. He's inscribe your name in the palm of his hands. His palm is so big that he can take all of us this morning. God love is not constrained. God love for you and I is more. It is proof. It is proof. Look at his hands. Look at his feet. Thomas turned his heart by doubting. But when he saw the hands of Jesus, something changed his mind. Something changed his attitude because he saw the near-scarred hands. If you want to see Jesus this morning, look at his hands, look at his feet, look at that body. It was all because of you and I. Greater love had no man than this. Then a man would lay down his life for his friend. God has given you a promise that if you serve him and if you fear him and if you love him, he will take your part. As long as you walk with God, he will walk with you. He didn't promise that the skies will always be blue. God didn't promise sun without rain. Joy without sorrow, peace with it without pain. But God promised us strength for today and grace for the trial that you have been going through. His grace this morning is sufficient to take us through. I have told you this morning about the two types in conclusion of fear. The natural fear, the spiritual fear. The problem with fear when it's not controlled would lead to spiritual death. Instead of moving in our faith, we will become stagnant. But I say to you this morning, be not dismayed. Our God will not fail you. From time to time, there is a call for action. Let us be good encouragers. God said, I'll be with you, I will strengthen you, and I will uphold you. God all around you, total protection. So why should you and I fear when God is near? Fear God and you will love him. When you love him, there is nothing else he won't do for you. I say fear God this morning, people. Love God. Cause him to strengthen you. I know it's hard time. I know it's trying time. But even through the valley, he will walk with us. He promised to be with us. Don't give up. You're about to experience your miracle. You're about to experience your journey with God. Don't give in to the enemy. Oh, my God, plant your feet on the ground and say, come with me. 
I will trust in the living God. May God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless you, Father. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. I worship your name. Oh, every fear, every doubt be banished in the name of Jesus. Oh, we will trust God with all that we have today. Oh, he has given us all we deserve. We do not deserve it this morning. But just look at that naysayed body. Look at his hands and his feet. He did it for you and I. God bless you this morning. I pray that your faith will be strengthened. I pray that you will go home refreshed. I pray that every fear and anxiety be banished. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.